one, two, three, four, and five, I caught a hare alive. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, I let him go again. These numbers are everywhere in our lives, so much so that I bet you haven't thought much about them. Where did they come from? Where will they go? When did you get here, Cotton Eye Joe? Right, okay, so you're probably told that these numbers are called Arabic numerals, as opposed to the Roman numerals you also learned in school, so that you can read old clocks and tell which Super Bowl it is, I guess? Well, what you may not know is that the numerals aren't actually Arabic or not Arabic originally, anyway, to chart the history of these numbers, we'll have to go a little further east, to India. This video is brought to you by my Patreon. So most of y'all probably already know what Patreon is, a platform where audiences can financially support their favorite creators online. Making money online and having a sustainable income from online content creation can be hard, so Patreon allows creators like yours truly to receive direct support from their viewers, like you. I've been making educational videos on YouTube for over two years now. You see, I graduated from university in 2020, and as I'm sure you remember, that wasn't a very fun time. So I started making YouTube videos to fill my time and keep me from going crazy. And the growth and positive response to my channel has been really overwhelming. You may have seen me already mention my Patreon in my last few videos, and I already have two patrons, Brian and Peter. I just want to take a second to shout them out specifically as my first patrons. It means a lot. So there are three tiers on the page, Baron, Earl, and Duke, each with different perks available. So if you want to support me, or if you want some of the perks that come with the page, you can click the link in the description, or go to the address you see on screen right now. And if you are unable or unwilling, that's totally fine. The best support I receive from you is subscribing, liking, commenting, and just watching my videos. Now back to our regularly scheduled programming. Thanks a lot. Our story starts in the 4th century in India, during the Gupta Empire. This was the beginning of the Golden Age of India, a period of history where considerable advancements in mathematics, science, and philosophy occurred on the Indian subcontinent. Things like the decimal system and the concept of zero were invented. But before those things could happen, they needed to invent the Hindu number system. Now, the symbols themselves are older, derived from the Brahmi numerals from the 3rd century BC. We aren't starting with them because while the symbols may be similar, the underlying system is not. You see, the Brahmi script, as well as most numerical systems of the time, like the Chinese and Roman numerals, did not use a place value notation. The Brahmi numerals had separate symbols for 10, 20, 30, and so on. This made doing arithmetic difficult. If you look to these Brahmi numerals, we can already recognize a couple numbers, 6 and 7 being the most prominent. And this is how they morphed into the Hindu numerals. You can see them here on the Gvalior inscription. Some of the numbers look more familiar, while others don't, like our 6 and 7 here. Oh, and here's a dot for zero. So here it is, the number system that gave us our modern numbers. So far the story's been pretty straightforward. Some people in India invented some numbers and some real ingenious people created an ingenious system. Oh, right, I haven't explained what makes these numbers so special. Well, they use a decimal positional system. What does that mean? Well, think of this. There are a total of 10 symbols in the whole of the Hindu Arabic set. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 0. With these 10 symbols, we can make any number we want, simply by changing their positions and using 0 as a tens marker. This is 1. At a 0, we have 10. At another, we have 100, and so on. To demonstrate the usefulness of this, here's the number 38 in Arabic numerals, and here it is in Roman numerals. The Arabic numerals only took two symbols, while the Roman numbers took seven. Right, so that's all fine and good, but how did these numbers get from here all the way over to here? Well, the clue's in the name. 
the first sighting or mentioning of the Indian number system in the Arab world was before the Arab world was, well, the Arab world. In 662, when the Islamic Empire had just started to stretch beyond the Arabian Peninsula, a Syrian Christian bishop named Severus Zabok wrote about the Hindu numbers and the genius of the Indian mathematicians. Quote, I will omit all discussion of the science of the Indians, of their subtle discoveries in astronomy, discoveries that are more ingenious than those of the Greeks and the Babylonians, and of their valuable method of calculation, which surpass description. I wish only to say that this computation is done by means of nine signs. If those who believe, because they speak Greek, that they have arrived at the limits of science, would read the Indian texts, they would be convinced, even if a little late in the day, that there are others who know something of value. This quote is brilliant. Not only does it diss the Hellenistic people for their cultural chauvinism, but it also communicates the awareness and respect some in the Middle East had towards Indian scientists. The Hindu numerals pop up again about a hundred or so years later in the writings of Al-Khwarizmi. Unfortunately, we don't have a copy of the book he wrote discussing the numbers. We instead have a Latin translation that was changed when translated. We then have Writings on Indian Arithmetic by al Uglidas and Principles of Hindu Reckoning by Kushyar ibn Laban, both written in the 10th century. These three works show that by this time, Islamic mathematicians and astronomers were using the Hindu numerals extensively, though most common Arabs, even literate ones, were not. This makes sense, as for simple monetary or business transactions, one only need basic arithmetic, and most people would do that using their fingers. So, we now have the numerals in the Arab world, but at this point the symbols were starting to disperse into three different varieties. In India, they had shifted to the Sanskrit Devanagari, still used today in India. In Arabia, Syria, and Egypt, they turned to what we call the East Arabic numerals, still used in parts of the Middle East. And lastly, the West Arabic numerals, sometimes called the Gubar numerals, evolved in North Africa. It is these Gubar numbers that will lay the foundation for our modern symbols. The Western numerals made their way into Europe through Spain, where the oldest example of their use is in the Codex Vigilanus, written by monks in 976. Some in Europe liked the system, like Pope Sylvester II, who tried to spread it around Italy to no avail, as most medieval Europeans used Roman numerals. The great mathematician Fibonacci used them in his groundbreaking Liber Abaci in 1202, and from there the system eventually spread. It was around the 15th century that the numbers finally caught on in Europe, and here's an example from Albert Dürer in 1514 showing the numbers in their current form. So there we are, the history of the Hindu Arabic numerals, from India to Arabia to Spain to Italy, and eventually the world. If you want to support the channel, please consider donating to my Patreon. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye!